Look at me. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh my god. Good morning. I am beyond pleased to say that the kitchen is pretty much done, which is it, we started this process back in February or March. It is now July. <laughs> Needless to say, it has taken quite a while. Oh. <laughs> I have been recording along the way. Thought it might be nice to sit down and go through the footage, go through the renovation process, show you the, you know, the finished product and the tour. And I'm already hot. Hot coffee is good for aesthetics, not good if you're a wildly sweaty person. Mmm. <laughs> <sighs> refreshing. <laughs> so I have my notes, I have my laptop, which right about now sounds like a jet engine, so I apologize if you can hear that. Buckle up, smoke them if you got them. Of course by that I mean drink some coffee if you have it, or tea. Let's go for it. Let us start at the beginning. <laughs> We bought this house back early winter, late fall. We knew pretty much any house that we were gonna get, the kitchen was going to have to be redone. We kind of had money set aside for that. The kitchen wasn't awful. <laughs> it wasn't great, but it wasn't awful. It was kind of just really, really plain, 80s or 90s. For whatever reason, they did not have any upper cabinets. Coming from someone who tends to squirrel things away like a woodland creature before winter, I didn't know where the previous owner was doing that. Quite impressive, if you ask me. But I kind of liked that it was really plain because it meant that I could sort of see the vision, if you will. I really, really struggle with interior decorating. I'll talk more about this later, but it's really difficult for me to picture things. So having a blank canvas really helped with that. So <laughs> after a lot of Pinterest searching, it was time to start planning. To save money, we thought, it'd be a great idea, we also thought, to go with an Ikea kitchen. We thought, naively. <laughs> Here's the thing, Ikea kitchens are great. There's a lot of customization. So basically you go on Ikea Kitchen Planner. It's like a program. It might want to make you tear your hair out. I cannot guarantee that you will leave that program with a full head of hair. Once you get the hang of it, it really, really helps to figure out what you're going for. You enter in your room dimensions and you can pick from all of their different products like The Sims, <laughs> except 374 times more frustrating. Then it came time to ordering all of this. We went to Ikea. They were out of quite a lot of things. We decided to go ahead and order anyways. We weren't sure when it was going to come in. That's kind of the problem with Ikea is that there isn't just one massive warehouse somewhere. If it isn't shipped to your store or a store that you can go to, you can't get it. We decided to order anyways and start building. Oh my goodness, come here. Okay. But before any of that could begin, while we did do this kitchen, probably 87% ourselves, we did have some contracting work come in for the stuff that we absolutely could not do. <laughs> if you saw my house tour, you might've seen the kitchen before and how sort of cramped it was over in the corner. You kind of have to do like a, like a huh, 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 like zigzag. Hey, this is fun. And it just did not make a lot of sense. So something I really, really wanted to do was add an archway so that it would be sort of a circular pathway from here to the sitting room. You can get much more fluid traffic into the kitchen. And I wanted it to look like a hobbit hole. So <laughs> what was there before? There was a weird pantry closet that wasn't even finished. You could see right down into the basement. Chokey number one. Don't like that. Basically, my biggest fear was throwing something away and looking down and seeing a shadow walk by. Who's 30 and still mildly afraid of the dark? Not me. Next to that was the fridge and there was like a weird pantry area that wasn't really big enough to actually store stuff. <laughs> we decided to knock that all out. We deleted the closet, moved the fridge over, made an archway, and really, really opened that space up. So that was the big renovation thing that we did in this room before we could even start. So once the cabinet started rolling in quite slowly, we decided it was time for demo. For your viewing pleasure, here is your girl being a super demo queen. Oh so heavy. Be 
basically it was a matter of just taking all the doors off the cabinets so that we could then smash. He's a demo queen! On the other side of the weird island thing, there was this wainscoting, I guess, like paneling. Something we really try to do with this house is recycle materials, kind of like the charm of being like, oh, that was originally over here. <laughs> we ended up using it over in this little nook area that I'll show you later. Something we did not expect was that these cabinets were really built well and really hard to destroy. <laughs> but eventually we got there and we found some treasure. Treasure. So now that demo was out of the way, we had a blank slate. Before we could get to building the cabinets, we had to put all of the paneling behind the cabinets. This was relatively easy. The paneling just came from Lowe's. It's not too expensive. While Nick was working on that, I wanted to feel a bit useful, introduce you to the great paint dilemma of 2022. If you have been here for pretty much any amount of time, you may know that I tend to gravitate towards earth tones and beiges, much like Charles from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I thought it would be a fun idea, challenge myself and have a kitchen that is a bold color. So what do I do? Of course, I start with a candy apple green, thinking that maybe it would work. <laughs> it did not. I think I'm gonna go good a tiny bit more desaturated of a green, kind of like this. I think that will help me, because right now it's very Jolly Rancher. Oh, makes me want a candy apple real bad. I tried really hard to push myself and to not be who I am internally. But after trying about four different greens, I gotta tell you, I fully embraced being a beige ass bitch. I, I gave it a try. I really did try to be fun and lively and colorful, but my world is 50 shades of beige. And now it came time to finally build the cabinets. Because we were missing quite a lot, we did end up putting some placeholders in. Didn't have this corner Lazy Susan cabinet, so we ended up just putting a wooden cube in there. Because it was all sort of a puzzle piece where we couldn't put in the butcher block countertops or the sink unless we did that. It was what it was for a while. <laughs> it do be like it do be. And also, we have a dishwasher now, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but ooh wee, modern conveniences. <laughs> I'll never go back. So basically with Ikea cabinets, they ship you five trillion boxes. Basically looked like Tim Allen's house in the Santa Claus when he gets all those boxes in his living room. In each box there is instructions that don't have any words on them. You kind of have to just figure it out. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, I think Nick might have lost his mind about seven separate times during this whole process. And I don't think he wants to see another Ikea instruction manual for the rest of his life. <laughs> We got to work during nights and weekends building our cabinets. I took on the role of being a cabinet troll. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls look like that creature that lives under the Flintstones cabinet and eats their trash. I also made a very important discovery about the source of this weird smell I had been smelling the entire time. Oh, something smells so weird. Oh, I think it's a screws. I don't know what it is they use, but it smells like farts. So, <laughs> uh. so once you have the cabinets built, then you have to do the drawers, which there's no direction on really where you should place things. It's kind of up to you and you have to guess. And of course I got it wrong more than enough times <laughs> after basically pelvic thrusting it into the cabinet. Instructions say to smash. This is what I said to do. Is that the right drop? If it's not the right height, then you have to just redo it, which... <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, it's a pain in my ass! A few months went by, finally got that corner cabinet, so Nick rolled that wooden cube out of the kitchen like a caveman that has not yet discovered the wheel. And we can finally start piecing things together, which was a huge relief. It was starting to get really exciting to see things come together. I can't reach it! <laughs> You gotta go further. I'm not gonna be able to get myself back up. I'll hoist you. <laughs> there you go. Hey, why are you filming me doing 
because it's funny. I'm confident enough to say that I think I am a connoisseur of putting together Ikea drawers because this big Victorian kind of pantry thing, oh my God, there's so many drawers. I got pretty good at it and I got pretty fast, so. Look at that. <laughs> Now that we had all of the base cabinets, a few weeks or a month went by. Finally, the upper cabinets all came into stock and we got them shipped. We opted for the see-through kind and it came with glass shelves, which I'm not super psyched about. So I think eventually I might switch these out for wooden shelves just because when you put glassware on glassware. I'm afraid that I'm just going to be a little too aggressive when I place something down and it's all just gonna shatter and go everywhere. Something else that the contractors did do, they replaced the door that was over here. My whole adult life, all I wanted is a Dutch door. Finally sourced a custom one. Hella expensive, but this is our forever home. I'm just gonna keep telling myself that like a mantra. And I honestly regret nothing because I don't know if it's healthy to be in love with a door but i also don't have any shame and i want the world to know it they also put in the tiles for us and we had every plan of doing it ourselves until we realized that we have no idea what we're doing the contractors were already working on the barn so we just tacked on them putting in the tiles for us which a huge huge help it looked like something out of like a buzz lightyear video game for a while but <laughs> they also sanded and stained the floors over here. I ended up not really liking the stain that they used. Dang it. Yeah. She in fact did not. I think it just had to do with the kind of wood this is. It just made the stain look really, really orange, which it wasn't on the can. Instead of having them fix that, we decided to be cheap and do it ourselves. And I liked the color a whole lot more. We made it a little bit more of a warm brown rather than an orange. So now that everything was in place, Nick could finish up doing all the trim and the decorative stuff before I went in and painted. And then I discovered the time-lapse function on this camera. So I became an unstoppable time-lapse force. Look at me. Oh my goodness. Oh no. no. Uh, oh my god. What are we doing? Uh, Proto Baggins. I really, really did not like the molding that was over in the corner here. I still wanted to keep it, so we just modernized it a tiny bit, took that trim off. Nick was able to just cut it down, and then I was able to paint it, and I think it looks way better and less 90s. Oh, <sighs> how are we doing? We good? <laughs> Here's a wholesome intermission of that one time we were watching a dinosaur show and Binks was very interested. Welcome back. It was starting to get towards the end of the project, which was really, really fun. This is my favorite part of the project, painting and decorating. For a while now, I have been wanting to experiment with lime washing. So I figured this was the perfect opportunity. I ended up getting a couple colors from, what are they called? I think it's Color Atelier. I started my adventure into researching how to lime wash. Their website was really, really helpful. Although the tutorial they provided had uh, oddly sensual music. But aside from that, I gathered all the information that I felt like I needed, watching one video on the internet, struggled for about 20 minutes to open the can, and when I did, the consistency of this paint is basically milk, so it wasn't too hard to clean up, but um, still a bit frustrating nonetheless, and it got all in the crack. <laughs> Don't tell Nick. The tutorial did sort of mention priming the walls first, but I thought, Pah. take this giant brush, it's like a deck stain brush, and it told you to do X's. Started doing that and quickly realized that it was a bit underwhelming. And by underwhelming, I mean completely invisible. Wow. 
Also, fun fact, if you use wood filler, at least the kind that we used, and then you try to use lime wash on top of it, it will turn it purple. Here is me discovering that, what I can only describe as pure bamboozlement and confusion. Why is it purple? What? After I stubbornly tried a couple more walls, I realized that wasn't gonna work. I ended up going in and painting the walls sort of like a parchment type color, like an antique white. And then I was able to use the white lime wash on top of that. Sort of became visible. Although I will warn you, it looks very subtle when you're doing it. And then it dries, very chalky and a bit more white. Okay, so <laughs> when I first put it on, it was pretty subtle. Um, and now that it's drying, <laughs> Oof. I did say to do two coats, so I'm gonna go in and do another coat just to even it out a little and get rid of some of the darker splotches. All right, we're learning. <laughs> Once I did a few more coats, I think it ended up looking really, really nice. I feel like the line between the lime, <laughs> between it looking historic and then like a set at Disney World, fake old, sort of like anything in home goods, is thin. Didn't want it to look too much like a set, uh, but also I don't really care if it does, so. <laughs> I am fairly confident that if someone discovers this house 2,000 years from now, they could make a successful clone of Frodo with all of the hair that is trapped in the layers of lime wash. Pretty much the same idea if you were to get any sort of gift with tape on it from yours truly. Just a little sprinkle of dog hair in everything that I do. So now my favorite part, decorating. Finally able to start putting up some of the shelves that I had purchased. extreme futzer when it comes to interior decorating. I really, really struggle with decorating like shelves. It takes me a lot of putting stuff up, taking stuff down, putting it back up. I don't know. I'm still not 100% happy with how things are arranged on the shelf. Similarly, we put some curtains on top of the sink window, decided we hated it, took it down, <laughs> figuring things out and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Sometimes you just gotta accept how your lizard brain works and that's how mine does, so. Nick, being the champ that he is, also built my kitchen island, which was from Ikea. He wanted something like an old baker's table or something really, really rustic and old looking, but I didn't wanna pay a lot of money for it. So those two things didn't really go together. Watched Facebook Marketplace like a hawk and I just couldn't really find anything. We just went with Ikea for now. If I ever find something in the future, um, you know, there's no rush, I'll get it. But for now, it's fine. So my friends, with that, I think we are ready for the reveal and the tour. Let's go. Let us begin. Okay, friends. Frodo, give the tour. So starting with the archway, make your way in. First up on the left, our little coat nook that I had mentioned. This wainscoting was what came from the island and I think it looks really nice. Waste not, want not. Nick made this key rack thing. Hooks are from Target, but this wood was actually in our barn. Really, really old wood. I think it's really, really beautiful. And Nick did a really, really good job. This is also that old barn wood. And then hook is from Target, which this is like porcelain. And let me tell you, when he was screwing this into the wood. But yeah, it's just a really nice place to hang. This is not aesthetic. Not the vibe. Hang our keys and Proto's leash and stuff. Continuing on. So these are the floors. I probably should have vacuumed before I did this tour. <laughs> Something I did not think about was how visible any trace of dirt, anything you spill is on a white floor. So that's something that I quickly learned. Whoops. <laughs> so you come in, ta-da. So I've got the breakfast nook area over there, which I think might be one of my favorite parts of the house. And then the flowers that my dad gave me for hitting a million subscribers. So what I liked about this is that you can keep like your aesthetic stuff here, not so aesthetic and ugly stuff under there because no one can see it. 
let me tell you, this thing has been a lifesaver. We were having to wear goggles every time we cooked onions in this house because there was no ventilation at all. Having that go directly to the outside is a relief and it's so, so nice just to turn that on. Not worry about smoking up the entire house. Like that van in that Blink-182 music video, except instead of drugs, onions and chicken smell. Just the little things. Window, this is also a new window. I did not mention that. The other one was rotting and falling apart, so we really did need to. Ready? Secret, Secret dishwasher. dishwasher. Oh, and I have to show you the under cabinet lighting, otherwise Nick will be outraged. These also came with in cabinet lighting too, but I, I, I don't know. I felt like that looked kind of cheesy, so I decided not to do that. But the under cabinet lighting comes in huge handy when you're cooking and it's just, that little bit of extra light. And then this cabinet, trash and recycling, and then ready? Hidden junk, junk drawer. <laughs> is our snack cabinet. And then just a bunch of drawers for things that I still have yet to go in and organize. So it's a little bit of a mess, um, it's fine. And then yeah, our big window looks out to our barn. Just a really, really nice place to chill out. <laughs> the door that I'm in love with. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on this wall yet. Of course, my too much brain is telling me that there needs to be something there. What I might do is go out in the backyard and get a big, nice looking branch, place where I can dry herbs or lavender or something. I saw one on Etsy, but I refuse to pay $40 plus for one when I can just go out into my backyard and get one, so. <laughs> hey, baby. Here's a good old before and after. Oh man, does it feel good to have this done. This was one of the longest house renovation projects we've ever done. So it's really, really satisfying to have that done and have that off of our shoulders. When I see things that I like, I will add to it, no doubt, because I am a knickknack queen. But yeah, for now, I'm just, I'm really happy with it. The kitchen was something that was really important to me because I get sort of stressed out easily when I cook. So I really needed a place that was gonna be nice and calming when I walked into it and start the stress level at zero before it starts climbing exponentially. Looking back on it, yes, we did save some money going through Ikea and doing it ourselves. Was it worth our sanity and our time? I think it was, yes. I think if we had someone come do this, not only would we to figure out contractors and schedules and stuff, and at least with this, we were able to chip away at it over time, over a few months. Because of that, it made it a little bit more fulfilling that way because of the frustrations of having to wait and it taking so long. It feels like we really put a lot of hard work into this. It's something that I can look at and be really proud of. And I feel like you just, you don't really get that as much when you have someone else do the work for you. Not that there's obviously anything wrong with that, but I just, I kind of like the feeling of looking at this and being like, yeah, man. Do I ever want to do this again? No never again so yeah that's it i think i may have missed a few things that i will then discover when editing but i think i covered just about everything and don't we all just want to see the before and afters anyways also side note huge 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 thank you for 1 million subscribers i i could talk all day about how grateful i am for all of you how sweet you all are and how just how much i love doing this and how much i love bringing you guys fun and exciting and, and sometimes stupid content <laughs> thank you so much for being here it means the absolute world to me uh and uh i hope you stick around <laughs> i love you whether you're new or old to this channel if you're new here and you feel like sticking around feel free to subscribe i upload most fridays and we have fun here and i will see you in my next video. Bye. It's really, really hard. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Ding, ding, darn it. Gotta check my notes, cause I'm so professional. Oh, they're still recording. Yes, good. Happy come back. Around the mountain when you come? What? What? 